You guys know that I have the best timing of all the people in the world, okay, right? Like, right after F I gave you guys an error propagation video. Like, perfect timing. So, as expected, right after AMC, guess what I'm gonna give you? That's right, a math video. Epic. Now, honestly, I'm kind of dead now because I just took the AMC 12 and that was not that great, but it's okay. So, the first thing we gotta do after taking the AMC 12 and doing bad on it is study for the Amy. Exactly. Hello everybody, I'm Farrah and today we're going to be doing the 2016 Amy walkthrough just like 1 through 5 and we'll see how it goes. You guys wanted me to do it because like some of you guys said that you wanted to see how I worked through Amy problems so hopefully this helps. But before we get into the Amy stuff, a little advice for the AMC 10B or 12B or whatever you're taking. I would recommend sticking with the AMC 10B unless it is like absolutely stellar on the AMC 10A because like you might think that the 12B gives you a better chance at qualifying your Amy but it really doesn't, like, I literally went from doing, like, a really good score on AMC 10 to, like, a really bad score on AMC 12 this year, so, I don't know, would not recommend taking 12 if you're just trying to qualify for AMI. My reasoning behind that is because, like, okay, so, you're going to take a test that 12th grader than 11th grader they're taking, right? So, obviously, those people are probably going to be a lot stronger than the people who are taking AMC 10, which includes middle schoolers and like people who are just starting out in math and both tests take the same percentage of people so like there'll be less people taking amc 12 sure but they're gonna let less people take the amy from amc 12 so you're basically shooting yourself in the foot if you're taking amc 10 12 just to qualify for amy that being said if you're feeling comfortable with your amc 10 a score sure go ahead take amc 12b it'll be epic and then in terms of just test taking strategies i know i probably should have made this earlier but you know i'm pretty punctual about this so Testing strategies, as always, like just the same thing over and over again, but always go through it quickly. Don't spend too much time on the first few problems. Have some time for the later few problems because those are the determining factors, okay? And also, it's just better if you get to read all the questions because there might be a really easy one in the last few that you just didn't get to because you spent too much time on a really hard one that got stuck in the middle. I think a good strategy is in the last five minutes, try to like double check your work because like in the last five minutes, you're probably not gonna solve anything. But if you, if you think you can solve, like if there's a problem that you're like have an idea how to do, do that. Don't go check your answers. But if you don't have a problem that you're working on right now, go back, spend the five minutes to check your answers. Because still either very costly on AMC 10. Not as costly as on Amy, for example, but it's still costly. All right, now into the walkthrough. Alrighty, problem one. So basically it represents an infinite geometric series with A is between negative one and one. Satisfy S of A times S of negative A is equal to 2016. Okay. Well, so we know the sum of the, ser the series is going to be 12 over 1 minus r, okay. And then we basically know that 12 over 1 minus a times 12 over 1 plus a is going to be equal to 2016. So that basically means that 144 over 2016 is going to be equal to a squared minus, well, no, 1 minus a squared. And that basically means that a squared is going to be equal to, what's 1 minus, okay, so subtract this epic stuff. Dude, subtracting is so hard. Why does subtracting have to be that hard? 872 over... Wait, what? No, that's not right. 1872, there we go. Alright, so then what is the addition of... Wait, so what are we trying to solve for? So let's try adding them. Then we basically get that it is... 12 over 1 minus A plus 12 over 1 plus A is going to be equal to... 12 plus A to... Okay, the so 24 over 1 minus A squared. Oh. Bruh. Well, if we know that 144 over 1 minus a squared is equal to 2016, then 24 over 1 minus a squared is just going to be, what's 144 over 24? This is 6. So we just divide 2016 by 6 and we get our answer. 3, 1, 8, 2, 1, 3, 1, 8, 3, 6, 6, 336, epic. 336 is our answer. Let us see if that is correct. Very epic. Nice. We solved the problem one. Amy, this is insane. All right, moving on to problem two, like the cool kids we are. Okay, two dice appear to be normal. Okay, so they quite clearly aren't, but their faces numbered one to six. Yeah, why, why would they give a normal? Like, yeah, it'd be too easy if it was normal. God dang it. But each die is weighted so that the probability of rolling the number K is directly proportional to K. Okay, the probability of rolling a seven with this trick. Oh, rolling a seven as in like a sum. Okay. With this pair of dice is m over n, where m and n are relatively prime and positive integers. So basically, we just gotta find the probability of each one, and that's what's gonna be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus 6. So that's the denominator, and then the numerator is just gonna be whatever k. And basically, if we wanna get a 7, we can either get a 1, 6, a 2, 5, a 3, 4, a 4, 3, a 5, 2, or a 6, 1. 
So, in the first case, it's going to be 1 over what? 6 times 7 over 2 is 21. Times 6 over 21, okay. And then over here we have 2 over 21 times 5 over 21. And then 3 over 21 times 4 over 21. And then we just double this times 2 because these are the same. So if we just calculate this out, we get 6 plus 10 plus 12 is going to be equal to 28. And then 28 over 21 squared times 2 is just going to be equal to 8 over 3 times 21 is equal to 8 over 63. And then for n plus n, so we just do 63 plus 8 is equal to 71. Very nice. Very nice. And epic, we got it right, dang. We're not making any 1 plus 1 equals 3 mistakes, that's pretty epic. A regular icosahedron is a 20-phase solid where each face is equilateral triangle and 5 triangles meet at every vertex. A regular icosahedron, shown below, has one vertex on the top, one vertex at the bottom, and an upper 5 pen pentagon of 5 vertices all adjacent to the top vertex. Oh god, why is it so long? But dang. Okay, so basically they're just de describing the icosahedron. So find the number of paths from the top to the bottom such that each part of the path goes downward or horizontally along the edge of the icosahedron and no vertex is repeated. Okay. So basically that means that to, on a path you have to go down, right? And then you could go spend as much time as you want on this layer and then eventually you have to go down. And then you can spend as much time as you want on this layer and then eventually you're going to have to go down. Okay. So basically what we got to figure out is the number of ways to spend time on a platform. So like Let's say that you, for example, just go down, right? And then there's five ways to go down, but for each case we go down, it's like the same number. So we can either just immediately go down from there, or we could go right once and then go down, or we could go right twice and then go down, and then we could go right like three times and then go down, and then you could go right four times and then go down, or you could go to the left. So that's eight ways to do it. Or no, nine, ten ways to do it. Because you don't have, to. no, no. Nine ways to do it, there we go. So the nine ways to spend time on a layer. So basically there's gonna be nine times nine, which is 81. Okay, I feel like I did something very, very wrong, but this has to be right, right? Because on a, oh, <laughs> uh, we forgot to multiply by five. Okay, we gotta multiply by five too. Okay, Whew. we're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, now I feel a lot better about this answer because it's very unlikely that you can multiply this by another factor in this. So, yeah, because the only thing you can multiply this is by 2, and I don't see any reason why 2 would make sense here. Alrighty, so 405 is our answer. No, there was a 2! Bruh! Hold up, hold up. Ah, I'm actually true. Bruh. Okay, I did not look at the solution. Let's figure out what was wrong. Oh my. That's impressive. That's some impressive stuff, not gonna lie. Okay, so you go down, right? There's 5 ways to go down. Then there's 9 ways to spend your time here, right? Because... You got a zero, you go one, you go two, you go three, you go four, or you could go the other way, okay? Oh! Oh, 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 from each vertex you either go down in two ways. Bruh, that's so troll. God dang it. So we multiply by two is equal to eight, ten. Okay. That's impressive, dude. We missed the number three on Amy. Big brain. A right prism with height h has bases that are regular hexagons with size of 12. 12, okay. And then we got a rectangular pr no, what? Hexagonal prism. This is a beautiful hexagonal prism, I promise. Look, look how beautiful that is. Absolutely stellar art performance right here. And then a high H, okay. So A and like a three adjacent thing that are pyramids, so we gotta figure out that pyramid. Dihedral angle formed by the face of the pyramid that lies. Wait, what? Face? Oh, so this angle and like this face that's hidden, okay. Oh, it's saying that this is 60 degrees. So our pyramid looks something like this. So we know this is 12, and then this length over here, if we do 30, 60, 90, this is 30 degrees, so that means that this over here is just gonna be 6 root 3, so this over thing is 12 root 3. So it's 12 root 3. And we're given that this angle over here, oops. I could draw lines, I swear. So this line over here, this angle is 60 degrees. So if we find this length, then we should be chilling. We're trying to find 8, so this is H. Well, we know what this one is. Well, if that's 60 degrees, then this should be h over root 3, and then that's also equal to 6. So h over root 3 equals 6, so 6 root 3 squared is 36 times 3 is equal to 108. Is 108 our answer? I think so! Alrighty, we're just gonna go with 108. Epic! Let's go! 9. Now let's do 5. Alrighty, on read a book on the first day, she read. N pages in T minutes were N to your positive integers on the second day. On read N plus 1. Oh, yeah. 
And he put, okay, I feel like this is the empty prompt. Each day thereafter, on reads one more page, blah, 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 then took one more, blah, 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 okay, until she read the 374 page book. Took her a total of 319 minutes. Oh, what? Wait, this is not that bad, right? So we don't know how many days, so let's just say the number of days is like D. So then it's just gonna be N plus dot, uh, plus N plus one plus, ah! N plus plus, this is not T plus plus, man. Okay, so N plus one plus dot 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 plus N plus D minus one. Okay, and then similarly for T, it's just gonna be T plus T plus one plus dot 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 plus T plus D minus one. Okay, and now if we just find the sums of both of these, we could set them equal to their number, then we should be chilling. So then this is gonna be two n plus d minus one times, and then there's d over two pairs, so that's the sum of the first one is equal to 374. And then similarly, if we do two t plus d minus one times d over two is equal to 370, 319. So if we subtract it, we get rid of like most of it. Hold up. Let's try subtracting it and see what happens. So everything other than the first term is gonna cancel out, so we're just gonna get nd minus td is equal to 374 minus 319 so then we get 56 yeah 56 so basically t no d times n minus t is equal to 56 wait what's 37 what are the factorizations of these nonsensical things well basically we know that d has to divide 319 so what is it 319 what is what divides 319 what the heck does 7 work no does 11 work? No, oh, 11 works, okay. So that's just gonna be 29 times 11. So D is either 29 or, no, what? D can't be 29 or 11. Wait, what? Well, we also know it divides 374, so what's 374? Okay, so one, eight, seven. That's also 11 times 17. So then it has to be 11, so D is 11. But what? Oh, did I just, I probably just did this wrong, right? Oh. Ha! That's 55! Big brain! Big, biggest brain ever! Okay, so... So this is gonna be 55, and then D is 11, so N minus T is equal to 5, and then what is... Well, I mean, we can just plug it in here. So if we plug this in, we get 2N plus 10 is equal to... What did we say it was? It's gonna be 17 times 4. Yeah, 17 times 4. Which is 68, so that basically means that N is equal to 29, which basically means that... T is going to be equal to 24, so let's try plugging that in here, so 48 plus, what was it, 11 plus 10 times 11 over 2, so this gives us 58, 9, 29, yeah, 20, oh, perfect, so it does work, so 29 and 24 were epic, so we add them and we get 53, very cool. Epic, okay, and because I got number 3 wrong and I'm triggered and I'm salty and I'm like, the biggest salt can shake or whatever you call it in the world, we're gonna do column six. And it's Geo, yes! I love Geo. Wait, did it get- Okay, good. The one that I got wrong was counting, so we can still say I love Geo. Alrighty, number six, okay. A, B, C, B, oh no, it's in center. I don't like in centers. Okay, so, oh, never mind. In center and bisectors make it okay. So, A, B, C, I, and then A, C, B. Ah, <laughs> bruh, I could draw angle bisectors, don't expose me. Okay, so this is L. Oh no, it intersects the circumcircle, god dang, what? No. Okay, so then it intersects the circumcircle at C and D, okay. L, I is 2, and L, oh wait, what? L, I is, oh, oh. <laughs> dude, my handwriting is too neat, I can read, I can tell the difference, okay, so this is C and this is L, okay. So there's two, there's three. Then I see this length over here is P over Q. How do you do this? So we know this angle is equal to this angle, but how does it help with that all? Well, so we know this equidistant from A and B. So if we like drop a perpendicular, does that help? Well, then we know that if we draw this right triangle, then this is gonna have to be the in radius, which doesn't help at all. Well, actually no, it doesn't have to be equidistant from A and B, that's wrong. So if we can find the ratio of the sides, then that would be nice. I still don't want to do this 3 over here. The 3 is triggering me. Oh wait, it is. Oh, so if we drop altitudes here, then that is equal. Oh wait, and this is the in radius. Wait, in that case then it does lie on the perpendicular bisector of this. Okay, wait, this is getting messy. So we did figure out that it does lie on the perpendicular bisector. Let's extremify this a little bit more so that it's easier to see. So 
this is gonna be this and then this is gonna go like that okay and then this is the in center let's try sending this to x then what can we figure out okay so let's say we have our a b c again so b a c then we know that basically you're gonna have that r times a plus b plus c is equal to the other area which is gonna be these two heights times a plus b because if we use similar triangles this one to this one then we could find this and we can find the area in two ways so that basically means that that basically means that x plus 2 is equal, times a plus b is equal to x times a plus b plus c and then if we simplify that then we basically get xc is equal to 2a plus b 2b so x is equal to 2a plus 2b over c does that help us at all? Wait, okay. Oh wait, but we could also figure out it in a different way if we use angle bisector theorem. But we're not using this 3 yet, which is annoying. So ultimately we want to be able to find out what this ratio is, c over a plus b. Oh, what? Wait, this is just equal to 1, 2 over x, right? Oh, that doesn't help. Okay, hold up. So now how do we use this 3? Wait, this is all equal to c times h. Well, okay, so this whole length is going to be c over 2. And then this over here is going to be c times b over a plus b. So if we subtract them, then we basically get that cb over 2 minus ac over 2 over a plus b is going to be this length over here. So basically the idea is we need this ratio to this ratio to be 1, 2, 2 to 3. And we know that this is the midpoint. Let's try undoing all this stuff for you. Wait, how does it help that it lies on the perpendicular bisector? That literally doesn't help at all. I mean, we have to be able to use that somehow, right? Well, we know it's equidistant from that. Oh, let's try erasing this and starting over. Let's see. So let's draw a circle. Okay, and then we got ABC. And then we got our thing over here. And actually, let's not draw that. Let's see. So, angle bisector. Another angle bisector. Angle bisector. This is equal to this. This is equal to this. This is equal to this, and this is equal to this. So we know that this is equal to 2 times this. So this is equal to the 1, this is equal to 2 times the triple. Oh wait, this one is a... Okay, we do external angle. This is 1 plus 2, and then this is 1 plus 3. Oh wait, wait a minute. Wait, these are isosceles triangles. <gasps> Bro, my diagram is so bad, that's why... Oh, I should have saw that so much earlier. Okay. So this is 5, this is 5, this is 5. Wait, okay, let's try this again. Wait. So this is a circle, and then we have like this, like that, like that. And then basically you got, uh, what is it? A, B, C. Okay. And then we have this, that, and that. Oh, uh. And then this is going to be 2, this is going to be 3, and then this is 5, and then this is 5. And then by cyclic quad, we know that this is similar to this. And then this, yeah, this is similar to this. Okay, so this is A, and this is, uh, this is B, and this is A, and this is X is Y, let's say. Okay, so B over X is equal to 5 over 3, and then Y over A is equal to 3 over 5. So what we really want is we want... Wait. Oh, if we have Y over A is just 3 over 5, then... Wait, we just wanted A over Y. So, if we know Y over A then this is going to be times a over y 2 times a over y which is going to be 10 over 3 oh wow okay that was pretty cool okay so i guess the answer is just 10 is that correct 13 13 though. all right very epic we did it finally we made it through the amy 2016 one one through six i know i wanted to do bruh dude a bunch of papers fell down but it's okay so we did it one through six Hope you guys enjoyed, hope it was helpful. Thank you guys for watching so much. If you want me to make more of these Amy videos, just let me know. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.